need to be able to understand how to break something that is really hard to understand for everybody to understand so uh be already things i struggle with which a lot of newbies will also struggle with is the information overload out there yeah. like this tutorial tutorial hell you're learning yeah. and learning very honest with you like very <laughs> straight up honest with you yeah. i didn't i didn't navigate it i also okay. struggled pretty much like everyone else uh mm -hmm. you, you can and a proof that i knew that i struggled was that if you go to my udemy account you see a lot of courses that i bought like knowing when exactly to leave and when yeah. to just move on yeah, i no, think yeah, a yeah, lot of people difficult. struggle with knowing when to actually leave and say okay i'm done with this i need to move to the next level. my name is esther debayo and on my tech journey with esther i sit down with tech folks to talk about how they've been able to handle rejections overcome obstacles in their careers and really cut through the hype from coding mistakes to battling rejections to balancing work life and even doing phenomenal things my guests will share everything raw and real on my tech journey with Esther. new episodes drop every week so you don't want to miss out hi everyone welcome to the very first episode of my tech journey with esther I'm very excited to, you know, start this podcast. And today we have a special guest with us. <laughs> we have Blessing Adeshiji. He's a yeah. senior developer relations engineer at Circle. And I'm excited about this conversation, you know, get to hear his story and his journey. So thank you, Blessing, for joining me today. Yeah, thank, thank you, Esther, for having me on the, on the show. And it was really amazing to learn that I'm the first uh person you're speaking to on the show so yeah you are. really honored to, to be here thank you you're welcome good to have you so before we jump into your whole journey and you know hearing your story so yeah. let's start with like an icebreaker <laughs> what's one um hobby that you do outside of work that maybe people do not know about oh okay uh i think funny how my i was thinking about it my hobby most people know about my hobby, but uh, because the only hobby I do outside of work that is not work is play sports. Like I, okay. I play basketball, I play football, oh, and then nice. I go to the gym. Yeah, I like to be active. Do you understand what I'm saying? So yeah. I think another hobby that I've sort of picked up that it's not work, but it's still somehow related to work is, mm -hmm. I think I've enjoyed uh, learning how like uh photography videography oh, are you serious? yeah nice. yeah 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 so uh i'm having to like you can check my youtube uh dashboard or like youtube you know the youtube home screen they tell they say how to know what someone is really interested in is mm -hmm. interested in interested. is when you check up their youtube home page you see a lot of videos on like history, video editing history, history. And everything yeah problem. video editing and uh video editing of like cameras um my different thing related to like phone like videography and photography i think more videography rather than photography and i've also like i'm also like getting some a couple of gears that i'm testing with yeah so i, I think it's somewhat like a hobby that i'd like to pursue apart from writing code mm, nice uh, that's really cool because i used to take pictures product photography before oh and, nice yeah. nice so, nice. it's, it's, so, so you're using that for your youtube channel yeah yeah i wish um that was lots of product photography i also developed video editing for my youtube so um okay. yeah i do lots of video editing on my own i also have someone that i work with to edit for me because of time I yeah same that. same workflow for me i do my editing and then i have someone i work with to also exactly, help out because that's the best thing <laughs> a lot of work especially when you have to start adding effects and all of that like it exactly exactly work. so if you see if you want to know the video i like i didn't edit myself you see that it doesn't have that special effect it doesn't have a lot of all those it's just straight to the point <laughs> Just yeah, it's just jump cuts, uh, maybe some maybe some match cuts, adding bureaus and adding like text, and pretty much that's it. So just me sharing what I know, and I've been going heavy on short form content, uh, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Instagram, TikTok threads. But I somewhat don't post on Twitter because I know you post on Twitter heavily because you're you're heavy you're heavily technical on like we are short on twitter but for me yeah i want 
I want someone that is not even in tech to understand what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about the tech content that are not so technical that on is Instagram. Not for, like newbies and yeah, exactly, newbies exactly, and exactly. Sense. Because yeah, because I want that to be outside my work. I'm on Twitter. I can talk. I can go really technical on like things I'm sharing, right? But outside that, Instagram shorts, YouTube shorts. I want like everybody to be able to understand uh, what I'm saying. So. Pretty much, it does so, the distinction. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Mm. So, um, I know that you studied petroleum engineering. <laughs> I've done some research. <laughs> oh wow, really? <laughs> from University of Ibadan. Oh, no. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm curious to know, like, what influenced your decision to study pet engineering? Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so I, I would say it wasn't a direct decision, or it wasn't like a well thought out decision and I'll explain why. So after my secondary school, after I finished from secondary school, uh, my secondary school was in Ocean State and I was, I happened to be the best graduating student, got almost all of the awards, like, you know, nice. so, <laughs> so, and I was pretty good. I was pretty good with math, physics, for the math. Yeah. And the sort of next thing they'll tell you to go study is they'll tell you to do mechanical engineering, or yeah. do yeah exactly or do something like that so and at that age you really don't know uh what you should study because you don't know how they sort of play together to affect who you are as a person or like th what the future is saying about what you want to study right and also in school i was very good with technical drawing so you can consider me as sort of like the engineering type of guy right so i'm like okay i i my jump was pretty good uh, but somehow, for some weird reason, I wasn't admitted into UI that year. And it was very disappointing because when people go, they'll be like, oh, wow, he graduated as the best student. Why is he uh, <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, exactly, right? It seemed very disappointing. But uh, what, what what then happened for, for me was that I found Cambridge Advanced A-Levels, which is somewhat like the British... Um, I, I don't know if you're familiar. It's like the British yeah. Advanced... Yeah. Yeah, it's like the British Advanced Sixth Form thing is something you do after secondary school. Secondary school, yeah. Yeah, it's more it's more advanced. Sort of gives before you like uni, the, yeah. before uni, yeah. And it's it's like it's like an exam you do to get into Oxford, Cambridge, uh Kent, in really big university mm -hmm. in the UK. And that was where my head was at at the time. Like I really want to get into Oxford, actually particularly Oxford. So I so why then what I did was that I, I looked it up, I knew I needed A levels and I, I knew I needed at least A star, which is so and the way it works, the way the Cambridge uh the way the Cambridge grading works is that mm -hmm. ninety to hundred is A star, uh eighty nine to eighty is A. So it's, it's it's really, really, really complex, yeah. And it's like an advanced uh exam. So what I did was I studied for it. I actually studied for it in nine months. And usually what you have to do is, is you have to study for it two years. Actually, most people, even in the UK, all these common sixth form colleges, they study for it in two years. So what I did was in Nigeria, a lot of, a lot of these schools actually take you through the curriculum for nine years. So I did that in, I'm sorry, nine months rather. I did that for nine months and then I got A stars in physics and that was what I wanted. So uh, I was excited, and then I went on to do the next exam for to study in Oxford, which is the physics aptitude test. Test, and I wanted to study mechanical engineering. Don't forget, like you are the engineering type of person; they mm -hmm. want you to study mechanical engineering. So I did that uh, to study physics, uh, to do the physics aptitude test to get into Oxford. I I passed the exam, got above, I think seventy eight percent, and the next stage is to get interviewed uh, here in Oxford for like the, before you get the admission, before you then get the scholarship. So unfortunately, I wasn't invited to do the interview to get into Oxford. So, but UI was kind of like my option too. And I didn't want to study mechanical engineering in UI. So I then picked petroleum engineering. Mm. So I didn't, I didn't even think I was going to resume, right? So it was when I didn't get the Oxford and I didn't get like jackpot opportunity back then. Mm -hmm. And that was in 2014. Yeah, that was in 2014. So I just went to UI and I started from 200 level studying petroleum, petroleum engineering in UI. And also the reason why I picked petroleum engineering in UI is that in Nigeria, everybody sort of talks about like oil money 
uh mm-hmm. that, like that's where the money is yeah. so i'm like okay i might as well just speak you have like, the money <laughs> yeah 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 and so i so i was looking at my career my career then i was looking at it more of oil and gas and maybe as you sort of continue speaking i'll explain to you why i switched from petroleum engineering to tech but then i was looking at oh i'm going to work at chevron shell exxon will be one of those big oil firm and after finishing in ui because that's pretty much what everyone does or slum bj they just move from ui to one of those big top firms big in companies. Ne- yeah yeah, that's so nice to hear because yeah. I actually studied mechanical engineering. Oh, so yeah. So I can really relate with you on the CD. Yeah. <laughs> using all those road train boards. And yeah, all yeah, 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 yeah. Pre- so pretty fun so nice time. Yeah. Yeah, mechanical engineering. It was fun too. So um, we are actually getting into why you switch from pet and gas to or pet engineering to um, technical or software okay. development. At what point? Mm-hmm. Was it after leaving school that you knew that okay, I'm not gonna mm. use petroleum so, engineering or what made you switch? Yeah, okay, so pretty much how it happened was that I did uh my internship, petroleum engineering internship at mm-hmm. Adax Nigeria and Adax Nigeria like really good one of like really good petroleum engineering oil and gas firm in Lagos, Ozumba and Badi was just really close to the toll gate. Uh, but I did it there. I, I spent six months and I worked at one of the best uh, department, which was drilling engineering department. But uh, as I was learning the petroleum engineering basics, the practical, because we're also drilling, we're going to the rig. I don't know if you know anything about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're traveling That's to the rig. Practical. Yeah, really practical. And uh, because when I so when I got to Adax, the entry level whatever was really complex. They do a test for you. After doing the test, then you then get in sort of like the normal software engineering lifestyle. Yeah. Now you do like a quantitative test where you do math, you do like English, you do abstract reasoning. Mm-hmm. And then I I did that. I got in, and after getting into Adax, you then do another interview where like if you perform the best they take you to like drilling which was one of the best department then because mm-hmm. that's where the action actually happened so again very competitive i mm-hmm. i did i performed the best in the interview and then i got going to drilling department and then i worked really well with like great engineers but one thing i realized then was that they they, they needed someone to crunch data right because we're getting a lot of data from the rig and they needed someone to crunch data to look at all this stuff and make sense of it. Most, most especially in the health and safety side. So I was basically crunching data to understand like Excel dashboard, basically. So that opened my eyes to data anal- analysis, right? So I'm like, okay, this, this seems really interesting. Their ability to analyze data and then take that to give meaningful information, information. And that seems really, really nice. So. During my internship, I looked it up and I was like, I saw a lot of things you could learn. And I came across Data Camp. So I'm like, okay, after my internship, I'm going to continue learning this. So when I got back from my internship, I started learning R programming language, which was one of like really deep statistical uh, programming language. Yeah. So I picked it up and, but in school, I also connected with some of my guys that were also doing Python stuff. So then I was like, okay, let me switch from R to Python because the community for R wasn't that big. So I, and then when I when you run into errors, you really don't know who to speak to. And I saw my guys doing amazing stuff with uh, Python. They were they were they were even preparing for a boot camp stuff even in school. So I'm like, okay, okay, let me join them and then let me skill up, let me learn Python. So I taught myself how to write Python along with those my colleagues back in school. And this was my final year actually because the internship program happened when after my 400 level and then Mm -hmm. moving to 500 level so that was when everything that was everything changed for me so i knew i was going to either drop petroleum engineering and focus on tech fully right and then or do both of them together so uh (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah so i'll do both of them together but i realized that i really enjoy tech more than petroleum engineering because even though i I, even though in petroleum engineering you you do a lot of math, you do a lot of algebra, you do a lot of real analysis, you do a lot of all these math that you need for computer science, you do, you do a lot of statistics. So, and these are the baseline for machine learning, data science. So, 
sort of like I understood already when I was reading uh, all the statistics books that teaches you how to analyze data. I understood most of the concept already. So I'm like, it's a no brainer for me to transfer my skill set from petroleum engineering into this area. So that was pretty much how the change happened for me. And it's been up ever since. That's interesting. And are yeah. you thinking of going back or still? Uh, no, no, no. So, so I, I, funny how I don't remember jack shit about <laughs> petroleum Same. engineering. Yeah, I don't remember anything again. Like, I, I don't remember anything. Pretty much, um, I, to be honest, when I say I don't remember anything, it's mainly because I decide to not, like, pursue active yeah uh, uh, actively but if i see something that maybe from first principle i can still explain it to you because of yeah. course you understood it back then in school and it doesn't leave you even when you see yeah, it true. you still pretty much understand it but as to going back no i'm not i'm not that that's done for me yeah that was Whatever. just a means, yeah that was just a means for me to get yeah. into tech yeah because even my first job was as a data scientist at an energy management firm and mm -hmm. Uh, that was literally three weeks after graduating from school. So I interviewed yes. at this, and we'll yeah, get, I interviewed. We'll get to your first job. Oh, 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 <laughs> we we'll get to your first job. But, um, I'm, I'm curious to know, like, from how you transitioned from like all the skills you learned, you started with R, and then yeah. you moved on to Python. For me, I attended a bootcamp where okay. I, you know, it was a nine-month bootcamp, and. I, I think one of the things I struggle with, which a lot of newbies will also struggle with, is the information overload out there. Yeah. Like this tutorial, tutorial hell, you're learning yeah. and learning. Different people are saying, for me, I'm from a JavaScript background, front end development. So, mm. I'm saying learn JavaScript. After JavaScript, learn views. And I'm saying learn React. So, how did you manage all those, you know, information overload? And how did you ensure that you were actually developing the skills to help you and not just getting stuck in the tutorial here oh okay I, i'll be very honest with you like very <laughs> straight up honest with you yeah. i didn't i didn't navigate it i also okay. struggled pretty much like everyone else uh you, you can and a proof that i knew that i struggled was that if you go to my udemy account you see a lot of courses that i bought mm -hmm. right so uh back then i felt like oh i need this course to get me out of what i what i need like i need this course and that's basically tutorial l Mm -hmm. So, at the point where things changed for me was uh, in, in 2020, uh, myself and some of my colleagues, we got this opportunity of reviewing project at Udacity. Mm -hmm. So, that's sort of like Udacity mentorship. And what that means is that Udacity Nano degree, you come in and you review people's project, people taking mm -hmm. like all these technical projects, you review their project and they pay you money for that. Which was nice. I was it was any I was any in dollars. F actually, my first uh, foreign exchange salary yes. back then in Nigeria. Yeah. So and one of the things they make you do is that for you to review a nano degree, you have to complete a project. So okay. that means once you complete that project, you you are certified to be able to review uh, the project. You are certified to be able to guide others through. So well, one thing is I need that by that time I, I had like a couple of projects to actually review and uh to, for you to be able to review it you have to go through the courses but i developed this skill actually that why can't i just start doing the project without going through the courses so anything i need i'll just go to google i search for it and then i i, I use that and i build it and at the end of the day i was able to actually build the project without going through any tutorial just just in time learning so from mm -hmm. that moment in time and I will explain the. Re I will explain how I actually played a strong uh, part in my career because I moved from data science to AI to blockchain, right? Pretty much cut across different industries. So I really, really prioritize just in time learning. If I need anything, that's like when I need to learn it. So if I need to work on a project, that's when I go out there to learn something because there's nothing good comes from me taking a particular course and then. Uh, I, 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 I just forget about it. I don't do anything from that particular knowledge. For example, in 2020 as well, during COVID, I learned how to write Golang. Mm -hmm. If you give me a syntax of Golang right now, I'll struggle to understand it because I've forgotten. I didn't use it for anything, right? So I didn't mean I, pra I practiced just in time learning. Uh, I would have been able to build something with it and then 
that knowledge will have sticked with me longer than I expect. So even if there's any beginner out there watching this podcast right now is that uh, there are a lot of information. You see a lot of tutorials out there on YouTube because everybody's creating, everybody's sharing knowledge. There's nothing wrong with that, but you just have to prioritize what you need to learn. So if you are there and you want to learn maybe JavaScript, you want to build a project, you can pick a clone project on YouTube. Yeah, Complete that clone project. At least you already know that mm -hmm. be because you completed that clone project, you can get knowledge from that to build other stuff. So just in time learning. Yeah, that's so good. I think just in time learning is actually something that is very helpful. Like it's a concept that is helpful because I yeah. found that a lot of beginners kind of just want to learn the entire, for example, if they are yeah. watching a course, they just watch the entire course. Yeah. And that course has beginner, intermediate, advanced concepts that will probably get them lost. So if yeah. they're just focusing on, okay, I want to know this particular aspect, pick a yeah. project, yeah. watch videos that are on that particular concept and then they know that concept before moving on so that's so yeah. useful to help people that are getting started in tech yeah so. and, and and now we have chat gpt yeah exactly. now we have chat gpt so <laughs> to be honest we have chat gpt and advice one thing you can do is if there's anything you want to like any project just think about a particular project look for example code online or something put that in chat gpt prompt chat GPT to sort of help you get started. And from there, you sort of know what you need. So, uh, and as you know what you need, if you feel like you need any help, chat GPT is always right by your side. You can even pay for copilot, pay for copilot. That would be in your VS code. And you have something that, oh, you want to, you, you, you want to complete a particular syntax of code. You can use copilot to complete that uh, syntax because one thing you're always scared of is you feel like you can't do it because like you're thinking about the entire thing but with chat gpt you can start small and then move exactly. and then move yeah. yeah yeah so you were in a different time when i learned when i came into tech there was no chat gpt exactly there was no chat gpt you have to write <laughs> yeah. the entire thing by yourself the whole yeah, syntax. yeah yeah so i know yeah. i used to struggle with syntax like the whole you know javascript yeah I, I, at some point i felt like i felt like i had to memorize some syntax like I yeah. literally used to try to memorize syntax and yeah. now I feel like no one cares There's actually. No point, because cause you have copilot, you have charge. Exactly. So just yeah. 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 And yeah. So just, so just spend time understanding what it is you're getting from the AI tools, what it mm -hmm. is that like, because if it gives you a code, ask it to explain, cause sometimes they get everything completely wrong and it's your own intuition that will now come into play. And also, I solved a lot of lead code as well. Like, mm -hmm. maybe we'll get to that during the interview. But while I was preparing to interview, I solved a lot of lead code. And what that actually revealed to me is that it g gave me that analytical mindset or like that logic, critical thinking, Thank where I'm able to like look at something I want to do. I'm able to look at a piece of code and decipher what it is that is going on. And that's something that is invaluable and it will st stick to you to the end of time. Yeah, that's so good. So good advice. Um, so now let's go back to your job search. And yeah. You're talking about how you got the job like three weeks that's after man. you graduated. <laughs> okay. That's, yeah. So that's so, one of the fastest. Yeah. Jobs. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how, how exactly did you find it? Just walk me through the entire okay. journey. Yeah. Yeah. So that was my first job out of school. Mm -hmm. Uh, studied petroleum engineering, right? Like did the project presentation thingy that we always do and literally uh three weeks after that i started my new role as a data scientist at an energy management firm in lakey lagos so how that happened was that one of my friends saw a twitter post on that and then he shared with me he's like oh they're paying fifty thousand naira for this for this role i think it was was it was supposed to be forty thousand naira okay. or fifty thousand naira. i can't really remember right it was an internship role and they're looking for someone with like analytical mindset can crunch number with excel uh right so and then i then submitted my resume my resume that wasn't that <laughs> that because um, yeah 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 but one thing that helped me was that i participated at boot camps uh, hackathons actually so data science nigeria used to organize these hackathons uh back then so there you you go on cargo Kagu is one of the biggest data science competition platform where you take uh, hackathons, you take project, and then you complete that for your price. So okay. Data Science Nigeria actually did a bootcamp where a bunch of us, all of us in Nigeria, like 
a data science enthusiast or AI enthusiast were tasked to compete on Kaggle. So I did that while I was still in school, kind of like a few months before I applied to that job. And I my, my model actually performed where I think top 10 or like top 15. Okay. So that was on my CV. And uh, I also... I also went from uh, I also went for a particular on-site hackathon organized by Data Science Nigeria and Access Bank FinTech Foundry. So Access Bank FinTech Foundry is sort of like a digital bank initiative to push technology adoption in banking. So Access Bank and Data Science Nigeria they partner together and they organize a machine learning hackathon for us to build like, sort of like a loan prediction and default loan application. So I, I, I did that with the team I'm, and my team also performed great. So that was also on my resume. So when I applied for this job without experience, I put all those projects, all those like uh, on-site hackathon and results, I put them on my resume and, I, and then I got a call, right? And then from the call, they invited me to come to Lagos for interview. And then when I got to Lagos, I did basically, they gave like some energy management uh, data set and ask me to crunch the number with Excel, right? So I did that with Excel because bear in mind that I was really good at ex Excel from my previous role, uh, internship role, right? I, I pretty much picked up Excel and did that. And then they learned that I could write Python and they wanted someone on their team to with Python knowledge, right? So pretty much I performed really, really well at the interview. And then they were like, wow, they are pleased to give me an offer to start right after my school, which was like a week uh from that from the date of interview so everything in total was like three weeks and then i started the the role so and you know after your university you have to do your nyc, NYC so yeah. yeah so i sort of connected everything together and then i did my nyc uh so that's why you did it in lagos yeah I did my nyc in lagos and they they it was really nice in a way that i basically in like four or five months i moved from being an intern to being like the full data scientist on the team because the full-time data scientist on the team actually left for another role uh, after i joined and because we worked together and i pretty much understand how everything works how our energy data moves how everything connects together how we analyze data uh the problem that we're facing and how we're solving them and then i also picked up data engineering because we're having to crunch a lot of like numbers because we get data every minute and we have multiple sites with multiple sensors that sends data to us remotely and we have like connectors and we have different python scripts that does the etl process which is the extract transform load process so i pretty much understood everything in a couple of months and when she left it was a no-brainer for me to fit into the role so that's, that's how i got so my first that's really nice i feel like the moment you knew that okay this <laughs> engineering is not really what I want to do. You just yeah. zeroed in on data Zero. engineering and learned as much as you could learn. And then yeah. was this the only job that you applied to or were there other jobs that you applied to? So I uh, funny out this was the only job I applied to nice. like uh, after university. But uh, from, from that moment onward, like after spending a year at that company, right? I then start to now apply to more jobs. More jobs. So first of all, one thing I want to say to anyone that is watching this podcast, mm -hmm. at some point in your life, you have to understand when to actually resign and when to quit what you're doing. Yeah. So you have to know when to chase the next challenge. So pretty much at the end, of, when, when I was getting closer to finishing my NYC, I knew that I needed to get more understanding. I knew that I needed to get more knowledge. And the, and the, the design of the team, the team was so small that I knew that I need to go out there because of the way, it's not, my, it's not their fault, it's just the way the team mm -hmm. is. Yeah. So I resigned. I actually dropped my resignation letter. And my, my boss was, was, was very, very surprised. and was like, wow, like, you're doing well. Why are you leaving? And I, and I was like, no, I need to like chase the next challenge. I just feel like it's something I've made the decision, right? So I resigned and then I moved from Lagos back to IB. And while I was at home, that was when I knew that. And this time I wasn't like, I was, I don't understand web development. Yeah. I was just, I was just the, the data guy, data engineering, data science. So then I go on Code, Code Academy. And then I learned JavaScript, I learned like HTML, CSS, I learned React, I learned all this rendering, front end, everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I picked up Node.js for back end. And I also, I'm like, I understand Python already. 
right? So the reason why I did this was because I felt like the job, uh, like, because I was applying to a ton of jobs, yeah? Uh, the job I needed, right? Like, I needed to uh, expand my skill set or expand my capabilities so that uh, I can have the ability to apply to more jobs, right? So, and it's because I'm self-taught, someone that... We've all been taught that resumes and cover letters are the keys to landing a job. But I'm here to tell you that there's a far more powerful tool that hiring managers are actually paying attention to. Ready to hear it? It's called your portfolio site. That's right. While everyone else is tweaking fonts on their resume, your developer portfolio is how you can wow recruiters. It shows off your creativity and skills in a way that no boring resume could ever. But be Building a polished portfolio from scratch takes forever, right? Wrong. I've created the ultimate portfolio site template that does all the heavy lifting for you, built with Next.js pages and Chakra UI. This portfolio site immediately introduces you to potential employers, highlighting your career achievements, gives them quick links to contact you and check out all your socials and GitHub. All you need to do is make tweaks and deploy, and then you're good to go. Access the code for this portfolio site by visiting the freelancehq.com slash get my portfolio uh, compare me to someone that studied computer science probably in year two or year three they must have learned one of these things of this, JavaScript. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so pretty much if you're a self-learner you always have to learn right and you always have to chase that like next knowledge so pretty much i resigned and then i went back home again in like a couple of weeks i think also like three weeks after resigning because i resigned june ending i think june ending and in like midweek mid month of july towards the end of july i got another job right so this time around i got a job as a data scientist at an e-learning company and the reason why i accepted that job was that this they were like you're going to be creating technical content also with your data science stuff do you mean so, writing yeah, yeah, say again blog articles do you mean technical no no, no like videos articles. like videos, videos. Okay. yeah 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 like videos because they were like they were trying to build that udacity model okay. for africans right really great project more well, like they were i think the one of the first to ever like build that big e-learning uh platform for for africans actually so they were like yeah we're happy to bring you on board uh, and the fun, the funny thing about the recruitment process was that I just saw the job post online. I've applied to a ton of jobs at this point in time because at the point where I resigned, I, I started applying to a ton of jobs. I wanted to take part in the HNG internship uh, for software development. Uh, and then I joined this online community on Slack. It's called Dev Center, right? I don't know if you're familiar with Dev Center. No, I'm familiar with oh, so on Dev Center, they post like a ton of jobs. So they post a, a ton of gigs, web development, beginner, internship, mid-level. Int so and they do, they don't post a lot of data science. So that was why I, that was why I thought that man, for me to get a job from this platform, I need to learn what these guys are mm -hmm. talking about. I need to learn JavaScript, front end, everything, yeah. right? So uh, back to my story. Uh, then I I got the job and basically it was X SQL that helped me like my knowledge writing structured query language was what helped me with the job. So on my, like during the interview, they asked a ton of SQL questions and I was able to answer them. It was sort of like a technical question, mm -hmm. but think about it. You, you have to write the code using SQL. So you have to query like a database, get the data that they want you to get from. So they were like, yeah, they, have SQL, they want to build a ton of data science content. And literally one of my first course that I built, yeah, was, uh, SQL course, really detailed course, one of like... Is this still there? available? Yeah, 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 it's still available on their platform. Yeah, it's still available. I can give you the link and probably yeah. add to the description. Yeah. So it's still available on their platform and I've seen like a ton of people send me private LinkedIn messages that that's probably one of the best uh, SQL course they, they ever like to. I did uh, Pandas. So Pandas is a framework in data science that you use to analyze data set. So I spent, I, I remember like Back then in school, when I was learning, yeah, I spent a ton of time trying to understand pandas. So I used that my knowledge to build a pandas course, and I built that course again. But again, I left that company kind of like uh, seven months or eight months. I just resigned. And mm -hmm. the reason why I resigned that role was that I got like a recruiter from Google actually reached out to me on LinkedIn. 
So they reached out for me to uh, interview for a role in Poland for software engineering with the cloud team. So I felt like, wow, this is this is this is an opportunity. <laughs> this is <the> next step. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is an opportunity that you don't get often, right? Yeah. So and uh, I was spending 10, 10 hours to eleven hours or twelve hours. Like I was spending long hours at my current day job. And uh, by that time, I, I also started freelancing. So I was freelancing well on Upwork, doing a couple of gigs. Nice. And then I was doing um, I was doing Udacity mentorship, and I was paying in dollars. So in a month, I could earn an average of 400 to 500 dollars. By the time I converted to Naira, that so seemed like money. a decent salary, mm -hmm. yeah? So uh, I felt like, okay, best thing for me to do is to leave my full-time job, and then focus, go all in on Google, so that I can basically interview at google right and then join i, I mean i would leave nigeria i'll join google yeah. like i was already oh. thinking about <laughs> i was yeah. already thinking about how all, everything will play will come will come to play and um funny how so what i did was i got like there was this really nice community that as ayo is, is on twitter right now he created a community yeah for people that was back in 2021 created a community for people that want to get into google and you have like an interview coming up. So what we do okay. in that community is that we help each other solve data structures and algorithm questions, lead code style questions. We 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 go during the week, we solve questions, then we come back with on calls, then ask each other questions, go over different concepts in preparation for the exam. I'm oh, sorry for the uh, interview. So yeah. I did my first interview and um, it was it was it was really technical. That was my first Google funk question style mm -hmm. funny how i solved so uh, i was given two questions by the interviewer i solved mm -hmm. the first one uh, and then i provided an optimization strategy because kind of you you do probably do like a brute force solution and then you probably optimize using it at, uh, yeah. yeah exactly so you optimize the code and then you talk about the time complexity you talk about the space mm -hmm. complexity and Oh, exactly. Right. So I walked through everything really, really nice. Then the second question came and I wasn't able to get that done in like the given time. Uh, so I think it was about 45 minutes. I think I saw the first one for like 25 minutes. But, but by the time I'm done with like the like 15, 10 minutes with the second one, the recruiter was already saying that uh, it's almost time for, for, right. for us to go over questions. So literally, I just tried to like solve my second question in half or like maybe like let's say 80 percent so mm -hmm. uh, funny how maybe it took me like three weeks to hear back from the recruiter and unfortunately i didn't get in uh i wasn't devastated but i was kind of pained so but then i just picked up myself Re bear in mind that i'd already resigned for my role right yeah <laughs> exactly so then i resigned for so i was just doing freelancing udacity i did that for a couple of months and then i joined sterling go money bank as a growth data scientist, which was somewhat like a senior data science role. And it was really nice. But unfortunately, I only spent two months because I got a job at uh, my previous company, which was sort of like a an AI company building models on top of GPTs at the time. So that was back in 2021, way before chat GPT, right? Uh, that was in August. So that was when I got the role as a developer relations engineer. And that's that itself is another entire different another field. <laughs> yeah, yeah, another <laughs> field. But, but yeah, another field. But it was so much related because if you think mm -hmm. about it, machine learning, natural language processing. So I'd worked on a ton of projects, even like not even full time role, like side projects. Even mm -hmm. I, I think I worked on a uh, a freelance or a consulting side gig project that where I had to deal with a lot of NLP problems. So that helped me understand NLP and. That like that was one thing I talked about during my interview. And before that interview, I interviewed with Bloomberg for software engineering role. But unfortunately, again, I didn't get in. And got so good. Luckily for me, I got into this US because it was fully remote US firm AI company. Nice. Wow. Your story is so inspiring. <laughs> you were very yeah. strategic, like knowing when exactly to leave and when yeah. to just move on. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. It's difficult. Struggle with knowing when to actually leave and say, okay, I'm done with this. I need to move to the next level. But you were very strategic from your first job to the next, to the next, just 
knowing yeah. exactly how to build your own career because I find out that in this tech world that we are in, I think your career growth is really up to you, right? It's not yeah. like anyone will say, okay, you're moving to yeah. this next level. It's really mm-hmm. up to you to determine, I need this, I want to become this in the next two years, this is what I will do. So yeah. we're yeah. really strategic. No, nah, yeah. Now, <laughs> yeah, 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 thanks. <laughs> thanks, so, but um, it, wasn't, it wasn't easy, but if you, if, looking back, right, it was some something that I like, one thing that always comes to mind is that I always think uh, I didn't get a computer science degree, right? Mm-hmm. So if if someone with a computer science degree is doing something once, twice, I have to do that particular stuff four times, five times, so that I can level up and match them. Yeah. True, true. Um, so I know that you, you've mentioned a couple of skills that you've picked up, like you started with R, Python, yeah. and then you've gone on to you know develop, you even talked about machine learning, NLPs, yeah. now you work with the blockchain and all of that. So yeah. how have you really, over the years, ensure that you are not like lagging behind, but you're still you know moving on with the current threads, picking up skills? How do you ensure that you don't get overwhelmed with all of what's going on out there, but you're able to still push forward and learn and learn and you know just grow your career? Yeah, uh, there, there's something I was having a discussion with my friend like a couple of weeks ago. I think it was in October. Yeah, when we we're on the call and we we're just chatting, like all of us tired back then mm-hmm. and we we're just like catching up. So they mentioned something that blessing is always interviewing. <laughs> 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 like anytime they come here, guy, 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 I'm working on a, I'm working on a recommend project. I'm working on something. I'm preparing for this interview. They're like yeah, blessings always interview. And one thing that looking back, yeah, when I interview, I don't know. Like uh, I get to learn something new, and they give you like a recruitment project. So most of the things I know now, I pick them up while preparing for an interview or while doing a particular recruitment project. Think about any power of tech. I've done a recruitment project for it. I've done DevOps recruitment project. Mm. I've done <laughs> software engineering recruitment project. Nice. I've done machine learning recruitment project. I've done, I think the one I even did before joining my current company was Rust recruitment project. And I'd, I'd never written a line of Rust before. I just went, there are things I like uh, crash course in Rust. I might not be really good. As your in demand or yeah, exactly kind learning, of like just yeah. learning. Yeah, just in time learning, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I might not be like the best Rust guy out there, but at least I understand mm-hmm. some a few concepts. And also one thing I would like to point out uh is I, there was a time in my life I went back, I think it was like two or three years ago, I actually went back to like the fundamentals. And when I'm like there's this book called Computer Science Distilled. So computer science distilled is a really great book i recommend for everybody to read it was when i was preparing for my google interview it was recommended by ayo uh he recommend for everybody to read that particular book yes yeah, so i read the book and that book up actually opened my eyes to like computer science how to think out the logic critical thinking pretty much everything so if you know that you can pick up any programming language can pick up javascript i write javascript i write typescript now to work mm-hmm. was a, i started as a python guy pretty much move from python to typescript so if i want to learn another programming language i have that foundation knowledge yeah. already so if you're out there and you're starting your tech career i really recommend like just close that noise spend a couple of time picking up that fundamental understand how the internet works understand understand different computer science like data structures mm-hmm. uh different algorithms pretty much spend time just picking up all these fundamentals because they would help you learn anything you want to learn they would help you get that skill set and to answer your question on uh, how do i stay up to date mm-hmm. i like i literally stay on youtube <laughs> almost every day so there's there's this thing i do right there's a, there's a particular, if somebody, uh, I've, there's great guys, because I'm also a creator on YouTube, yeah? There are great guys that I'm subscribed to, and they actually share great learnings, great information about what they're currently working on. So, uh, for example, Theo, the Prime Gene, a lot of oh, all yeah. these great guys, I'm, I'm subscribed to their channel, and they share really helpful tips, okay. and really, like, for example, the next, like, next framework, uh, they share really great, great stuff about next, and then, for example, I think like a few weeks ago, I completed my crash, my sample next project, 
where I built like sort of like a nice front end with Next, and then I understand how Next works, and then I'm using Next and my pro and my company and my role to build like a demo app oh, for yeah. other people. Yeah, so that's me pretty yes. much. Yeah, so if there's any cool thing outside, and if there's any new thing in AI, and then I use uh programming language also to automate a part of my life. Very, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. So for example, like AI, I could use the assistant API, which I've actually done. OpenAI announced the assistant yeah. API a couple of weeks, I think it was two weeks ago. Yeah, I've used it to create exactly. something nice. Yeah. So, th and that's how I learned. So now if I need to use the assistant API, I already know, like I already know how to integrate how it. To use it. Yeah. yeah. So, that's yeah. so, so good. It's, it's not easy, but it's just something. It's not you have easy, to, actually. It's not easy. It's something to you have to do. Just to, put your head down and learn, but it comes yeah. with like just in time learning, whatever yeah. you need in that in that particular time learning, yeah. and then just yeah. keep on learning and learning. Yeah. So um, we are gradually getting to the end of our discussion. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I just want to know how you also transitioned from like data engineering machine learning and all of that into blockchain because now you work at circle which is a blockchain yeah. company yeah. so um how did you manage to one become like a developer relations engineer that devrel field from yeah. just yeah. regular software engineering what made you make that switch okay yeah so uh I, it, kind of uh if i look back back so 2014 i mentioned uh, that I did A levels. Uh, why I didn't mention was that after my A levels, I was teaching math and physics to students who want to write A levels because I got ISTA. So that sort of opened my eyes to a certain skill set that I have, uh, breaking complex topics into like something that is easy to understand. Uh, and it's not everybody that actually have that skill set. And if you are going to be a developer advocate, you that, that's your top priority skill set. You need to be able to understand how to break something that is really hard to understand for everybody to understand. So uh, I already really, really own that skill set. And then I worked at uh, e-learning company, basically creating online course while I worked as a data scientist also. So that also helped me own my skill set of explaining complex topics to everyone. And I've also created courses. I've created courses with Coursera. I actually did a generative AI course with Coursera recently this year. So uh, how I landed my developer relations role was that the company, my previous company where I worked, the AI company, they wanted to recruit me as a React visualization engineer. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, the really different from developer relations. It's so, it's some, so my role then will, will be that I'll use React D3JS to draw visualization dashboard, uh, showing our client different analytics. So if you, if you are one of, if you have an account with us, you basically go on your dashboard, you see your usage, your token count, which is, and you see your cost, everything. So they wanted to pick recruitment for that role. And, but during the call, the engineering manager actually, when we started speaking, he actually learned that I have a greater like affinity for learning different stuff and basically explaining to, to someone to understand, right? Really, really in much detail, uh, uh manner. So, what he then did was that he then he came back to me and was like, uh, this React visualization engineering role is, is not something that is really compulsory for us to have. It will, it's just a nice to have. So what we're going to do is, but this developer relations role is something that we actually really, really need because we'll be shipping out a ton of API, we'll be shipping out the SDK. We need someone to come create documentation. We need someone to come work on demo projects. We need someone to speak at meetups, conferences. And it seems like you've done that a lot already, even without you realizing it. And I'm like, wow. That was the first time I looked up developer relations engineering. Like I just Googled that what is developer relations engineering and I saw that I'm like, oh yeah, I'm happy to do it because bear in mind, uh, the role was paying really, really high when you compare to like what you were at end in Nigeria. Yeah, it was yeah. about like a thousand two hundred percent increase wow. from my current uh one thousand two hundred percent increase that's, from my current like <laughs> Yeah. So I'm like, ah, yeah, I'm happy to do it. Yeah. So it then you're yeah, very to like, happy to do yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then moved me to like the next interview series. And then uh, I basically killed the interview. So funny yes. how they gave me the role. They gave me an offer an hour after my interview. They were like, wow, wow. that's quick. Like one of the quickest <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, offer letter I've ever yeah. gotten. So that's they gave me an, nice. they, yeah, they gave me, they gave me a letter 
pretty much after after like an hour and I, I started like almost immediately so and i built a ton of project on gypsy theory large language uh api then there was no there was no chat chat gpt so open ai also really just started shipping out uh apis for large language model at the time mm -hmm. yeah and one of my colleagues and my current role even mentioned that our ah, blessing the company you worked at made you like you were so ahead of all of us Everywhere. like you missed ahead of the time <laughs> because yeah, yeah because the reason why i shared with him a sample project i built in 2021 where i connected gpt3 to whatsapp so i was mm -hmm. i was literally i literally had my own ai in whatsapp that i could chat mm -hmm. with ask mm -hmm. questions and that's pretty much what chat gpt does right now yeah. and the, the reason why i did that at the time was that i understood the uh way of like the product mindset that time that when we need to ship these apis to a ton of uh, users because our API was built on top of GPT-3. So if we can ship this to developers, developers will be able to build something like that. So basically that was my, that was my time as a developer relations engineer. And then how I got to circle was that this year, I, I started interviewing because mm -hmm. there was a lot of layoffs at my current, at my previous company rather. And I, I knew that, man, I need to be on my toes and cause I survived four rounds of layoffs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I knew I needed to like get out there to start interviewing. So a re the recruiter, the circle recruiter actually reached out to me, she sent me an email and she was like, uh, do you think you'll be able to join uh, the circle? And I'm like, wow, yeah. Because for what you don't realize is that, you know, I told you that also on the side, I'm always learning. So mm -hmm. I like 2020, 2021, when crypto was actually booming. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when it was the thing. Yeah. I learned solidity. I learned a couple of all these blockchain terms, all these, I did a ton of projects. There was actually a learning space called Build Space. I was very active in their Discord. I was, I did a ton of their projects. So I understood how to uh, work with Solana blockchain, work with Ethereum, virtual machine blockchain, EVMs, compatible blockchain. So I already had what I needed to interview at Circle. So when it got to the time for me to interview at Circle, I basically blazed through the interview process and uh, the team was, they were very, very, very happy to have me because again, uh, you, I did like for my presentation, you know, part of developer relations engineer interviews, you have to do a presentation. Yeah. You have to do a technical presentation. So for my presentation, I went above and beyond to build yeah. something really crazy for the team. I built it from scratch. I actually built it on top of chat GPT. And what, what it does was that what it does, what it, what it, what it does is that I connected it to like their, knowledge bank where they have a ton of documentation mm -hmm. uh, on YouTube actually. So you copy YouTube videos link, you paste it, and then I can I built a chat GPT plugin using the OpenAI chat GPT retrieval uh, template. I built it, connected to connected it to a vector database where it stores their embeddings. So the moment I get the video from YouTube, it it transcribes using the YouTube transcript API, mm -hmm. ships the text to embedding, vector embedding. I, I use Pinecone, ships it. Mm -hmm. And then when you go in ChatGPT using the plugin, mm -hmm. you can so just, just then query it. And then it just answers you back. Results. Yeah. Nice. So I'm like, ah, this nice. is really, this is a nice developer relations project yeah. that I would love to work on. And I built it for you guys from scratch. And I'm happy to like join the team, and we're like, yeah. You know when you're when you're interviewing, and you know that you've got a new job, all their faces are lit up. And exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. That's so yeah. good to know. That's really yeah, nice. Yeah. So, um, so that's that's how I joined Seku, and yeah. uh, Seku is all something really different. Like in, uh, I've been at the team for like, I've been sorry, I've been in oh. the team for, uh, I've been in the team since July. That's pretty much for almost four months. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, almost four months actually. Yeah, almost four months, and I've done. I've done things that I I didn't even think I was uh, I would be able to do when I started, yeah. So I've done like a lot of stuff. I've traveled. I've traveled a lot. I've mm -hmm. I've learned a lot. Built a ton of uh, projects. Created a ton of content because mm -hmm. when I joined, that was when we have like the teams focusing on content. content. Created a ton of videos. Created a ton of and that was also when Seco actually shipped a ton of developer uh tools yeah developer tools really and a lot of them came out from beta and so it was just working from one to the other creating content on that working on different projects yeah and learning a lot because blockchain is actually really interesting for most people out there they, some people think ah it's complex but it's really really interesting I started learning it and it stopped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 hopefully we'll get to a, we, to a point where 
you don't have to and that's what we are push that's what we are actually supporting developers to do we're building out a ton of tools a ton of uh, developer focused tools that would help you abstract like a ton of these blockchain complexities and you just deal with like a normal web tool like something you are used to which is restful apis you're making mm-hmm. api endpoints call you're integrating it to your front end which is something really everybody's nice. familiar with really cool. yeah. Yeah. Nice. so um <laughs> you're wrapping up already um yeah. i know you've mentioned a very good number of advice for yeah. um newbies in tech but what's one last thing that you you would like to say to anyone that wants to maybe pick up a career in tech or to anyone that has been struggling with career growth and not getting jobs what's that thing that they should be doing yeah so my advice to anyone in that uh in that like in that space is building public uh whether whether you're learning whether you're building something make sure it's in public write article about what you've just learned create a video about what you just learned if you can start a newsletter start a newsletter even if you don't have a job uh just make sure that everybody that are in your circle or everybody that is out there or everybody that cares to listen or everybody that cares to see your content knows that you are the go-to person for either javascript or whatever you're learning so for example what i would do is if i was learning in tech right now is i'll build projects i'll write articles about it i'll create videos about it i'll probably share a newsletter or share constantly on twitter what you're doing is that you're putting bots that are automatically looking for jobs for you or you're putting things out there that are automatically attracting opportunities to you so mm-hmm. you're basically going to uh you're, you'll be in a position where a lot of all these things you've done will then come full circle to give you that fantastic opportunity where someone will find you online and they'll be like oh i'm happy to work with you either come join us as uh an expert in what you're learning or either we have this role because you've been tweeting about it uh, or you, because you've been sharing a ton of stuff about it, come join our company based off of that. So if you're learning anything, I'll just make sure I do it in public. Mm-hmm. When you solid advice, build yeah. in public, learn in public, because yeah. at the end of the day, nobody really knows how good you are to actually share it. So, until you, exactly, yeah. until you actually share it, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. Please, yeah, yeah, for yeah. Can I? Me. Can I? I add really enjoy this conversation. Oh, really is it? <laughs> yeah. Can I add something? Like, I, yeah, I, um, I a ton of this advice, a ton of this video. Like, I also give on my YouTube channel. So, if yeah. they don't mind, subscribe to my. I YouTube would. Channel. I would put your YouTube channel okay. link in okay. the description yeah, that's, box. That, so. that's that's yeah. that's great. Uh, thank you. And one thing I also want, I, want, I wanted to share something. Um. If I remember anything, I'll I'll let you know. But pretty much that's okay. it. Yeah. yeah, I hope you enjoyed sharing your journey. No, yeah, it was fun. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, it was fun. I, yeah and I look forward to maybe like doing a physical one. Maybe it okay. grows. Yeah, you can invite definitely. me for episode two because there's yeah, more to talk definitely. about. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, this has been so much fun. Thank you Same so here. much, and yeah. yeah, see you guys in the next episode. Bye.